Well, hello, Kat. I am joined by my Blue Alien emotional support today because I will be doing some things that I do not normally do. Per the request of Beautifully Bookish Bethany, today I will be getting drunk and reading Ice Planet Barbarians. I do not normally read bodice rippers of any kind, let alone the Blue Alien peeing kind. And I do not normally drink wine, especially not rosé wine. But I will be drinking rosé and reading this Blue Alien bean book. I don't even know why I have this rosé. I just buy Ravel wine for my mom because it's vegan and she likes wine. So I like to have it in the house for when she comes over. But my mom only drinks red wine. So when I bought a bunch of Ravel wine, I also bought this rosé because I don't know, I was like, variety is a good thing to have even though neither I nor my mom drink rosé. So I think some part of past me knew this day would come. So I'm ready with my chilled bottle of rosé, but I will not be drinking it out of a wine glass. Oh no, I will be drinking it out of my Mint Invaders from Chocolate Space coffee mug, because <laughs> that seems more appropriate for this situation. Also, it kind of matches. I have a theme going. And to stay hydrated, I have my space-themed water bottle. So I'm all set. I have everything that I need to get through this ordeal. Off we go. So I'm about 25 pages in and um, there's a rough beginning and this wine is disgusting. Um, um, so far I feel like I'm reading like a war, ref like atrocity refugee book because this alien abduction is, um, it's rough. <laughs> these first 25 pages have been all these girls that have been picked up by aliens that are not the blue guys. You know, these are ugly, disgusting, gross, bad guys who kidnap them from Earth and put them in their ship like cattle. And that is the metaphor, that is the comparison that they themselves use, is that they are like cattle because they're tagged and injected and put in a cage. And um, <laughs> being a vegan, I'm like, yeah, it's fucked up, isn't it? <laughs> but, um, and they've just crash landed somewhere else. And like it, I, Bethany told me that they cut out a scene in this edition that was in the original. And I think I know exactly where, because like, when our girl wakes up in his cell and they're like, don't scream, don't make a sound. And she's like, why? And they're like, you'll probably see soon enough. And then soon enough, a new girl gets dumped in the cage as well. And she starts screaming, of course. And then like, we get sort of like a dot, dot, dot about like what happens to her when the alien dudes show up to like take care of it. And it's just like, it goes like dot, dot, dot. And she's like, well, I guess she's disciplined now. And then like later, like a page or two later, she's like, they're talking about like uh, how to escape and like should they scream and like if we scream you know we'll just get raped or whatever so I was like okay so it implied at first and then outright said that that's what happened to that girl that she screamed they showed up and they raped her so I'm pretty sure that's the scene that got cut out as I think the original had like showed the aliens raping that girl so I'm glad that that got cut out because this is already dark as fuck for the beginning of a romance novel ah there's like I mean they're I guess I like how realistic it is, although it's not very realistic. It's not realistic, but like grim in its realism. Like this isn't like a, oh no, we got abducted and isn't that terrible and we're scared. I mean, like they're pretty banged up and parts of them are broken and they're all shitting in one bucket in this big cage and it stinks and they stink. And I'm like, this is really gross. God, I hope this gets fun and romantic. I thought I was going to be drinking and eye rolling at blue peens, but so far it has been prisoners shitting in a bucket and then using said shit as a weapon against their captors, which, I mean, in an anthro class, like I studied about 
uh, I studied like prisoner behavior and what it is that makes prisoners want to like throw feces, their own feces at their uh, at guards and stuff. So I'm like, this is, this is dark. This is really dark. But they have crash landed on what seems to be a snowy planet, perhaps an ice planet. <laughs> so I'm hoping that we get to like some happy times soon. I don't know which one of this I can take. Also, what is weird is the girl that is like um, Miss Exposition, who like first tells our main character where she is and what's happening and not to scream. She has continued to be Miss Exposition, and like after they crash land, once again, our girl has to be like woken up because she like gets knocked out by the crash landing. Once again, it's Miss Exposition who's like, okay, here's the two that died, or like two of us are dead, some of us are injured, here's the two that are dead, isn't that sad for them? And like, you know, we, we think we're on this planet, but you know, or we think we're on another planet, we're not sure, we think they're dropping us off, picking us up later, we don't think it's Earth. And she's like so like chipper. And in fact, cause like that's what I kept thinking when they were on the ship and now they've crash landed still, that she's pretty like, you know, orientation day at being imprisoned and raped by aliens. <laughs> And the main character is like, you're pretty chipper. Um, and she's like, what did she say? Yeah, the main character says, why are you in such a good mood? And she's like, because we're free, she says enthusiastically. We are fucking free and we've landed somewhere. I already count those as better odds than what we had before. And just for context, they have crash landed. And this girl, the one who was like, we're free. Um, her like uh, foot is like broken and it's described directly before that as her toes look pretty awful. Like they tried to make a strategic retreat into my foot and failed. She says that about them. And then it's like, but we're fucking free. And I'm like, you would be in so much pain right now. <laughs> like I, if I stub my toe, I'm like, don't fucking talk to me right now. But your toes are making a strategic retreat into your foot. And you're like, that's what they look like. Isn't that gross? We're free. <laughs> like, um, is she like in shock and that's why she's like this? Cause that's not how it comes across. You would need so many painkillers. So many painkillers. And our main character's wrist is broken. And at least she's not chipper about it. She's like, I think my wrist is broken. <laughs> so yeah, I'm having a blast. I forgot to say, and this is like the whole reason I turned on my camera other than that I needed a top up of this disgusting wine. So like right they crash landed and uh, Kira's not doing so good. She's like pretty down about it and like they're trying to figure out where they are, right? And um, she's like, everyone's hurt. I don't know how fast we can move or if we can, if it's safe to move. For all we know, we could be floating on a sea of ice filled with man-eating ice sharks, which I'm like, that's the least of what could be going on. And uh, Miss Chipper is like, good God, you're Susie fucking sunshine, aren't you? And I'm like, oh, I think she's, reacting very naturally to this. And then Kira responds, sorry, Kira grimaces, pressing a palm to her forehead. It's been a hell of a day, and I feel like it's just going to get worse. A hell of a day? This is like week two of you being abducted by aliens and shitting in a bucket, and you've just crash landed on an alien planet. It's been a hell of a day, I think is putting it mildly. <laughs> and if this day couldn't get any weirder, it is sunny and raining at the same time right now. I don't understand what is happening. It looks like it's raining up. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. So I think I heard Mara or someone refer to the planet that they're on as Not Hot. And I just thought that's the name of the planet, Not Hoth. It is in fact the Hoth that is not Hoth. As in Empire Strikes Back. So we've had our first chapter from the dude's perspective and um it's like three pages and within those three pages he has already decided that he wants to fuck her he is the blue alien man and he caught her in his like hunting trap and he immediately instantly upon coming into like not even physical contact just like proximity with her is like, my mating sense is a quiver. I have never felt a mating sense with my kind before, but now I suddenly want to bang. And so then he brings her to their little cave and is like, okay, so like, what is this situation? She's, um, she doesn't have this like inner warmth thing that they seem to have, like the adults of this 
species. It's like, oh, okay, so she's like a kid. She needs to be kept warm, so we're gonna build a fire for her. So in his mind, he's already likened her to a child, and now he's examined the rest of her, and he's like, she's got no ridges, no muscle, no fur. She's gotten into this, like, magical inner warmth. She's like this small, fragile, weak child, basically. And then he's got her so, he's decided that she needs to keep her clothes on, because she's like, she needs it for warmth, but like, he's also taken it off and um, examined the nether situation and is like, she's got a little hair there, ha, that's funny and useless, which like, I mean, in fairness, it is pretty useless. <laughs> but again, this is like the second page of his perspective and he's taking a look at her nethers and the smell of her nethers and is like, must bang. <laughs> what? So yeah, this is not a slow burn. It's literally page one of his chapter page two and three and within that time finds her undresses her decides she's basically a child wants to bang her i mean even a human male having that kind of a turnaround i would be concerned what also the sun has come out if you can't tell from this weird lighting um, anyway I will crack on. Oh, also, I refuse to drink any more of that rosé. It is disgusting. So I will switch to scotch. I have a Jamie uh, from Outlander. What is his name? Not Jamie Lannister. <laughs> Fuck. Jamie Fraser. I have a Jamie Fraser scotch glass. And I have the, the actor Sam Hewen has his own distillery. And he has his own scotch that is called Sassanac. So I will have some Sassanac in my... Uh, I'll have a Scott on the rocks glass because that's romance novelish. I just, I cannot with the rose. Absolutely fucking not. So much more back to her. I've only made it like two pages. And um, she's like, she wakes up with him eating, with, with him. She like wakes up as he's, or she's like coming out, she's like coming to as he's um feasting. And um, she's at first just like, mm, that's good. Hang on a minute. What's this? Realizes he's like describes his alienness, his blueness um, to us. So he, he's basically like, sounds like Navi from Avatar, but like thicker. And then she realizes that like she recognizes him from like up from hanging upside down in the hunter's trap. And she's like, and I realize I saw them from hanging upside down. It wasn't a monster come to eat me. It was this monster who's come to eat me out. Okay, I've decided I need that scotch. Slangeva. I would just like you to know that her getting abducted by aliens and that whole shit show, literally a shit show, and her getting caught in a hunter's trap by the blue alien man and the blue alien man immediately wanting to go down on her and then her reaction to having him go down on her is all part one because I have just reached part two. Well, part two starts with a bang. My mate, the resonance of my cooey, my new reason for existing has just planted her tiny strange foot in my chest and kicked. It's almost as if she does not want to mate. Your mate? You just caught her at a hunter's trap like five minutes ago. There's insta-love and then there's, Hey, I just met you and this is crazy. Okay, so she's like upset that the food is gross and she can't eat and she can't communicate and you know, she's like overwhelmed. So she like, she has like a single glistening tear that he like wipes away with his finger or his one of his digits and she remarks that his skin feels like suede or chamois bring it up just because as soon as she described it that way i'm basically picturing like a seven foot tall fungo pop of a navi with like but that's like a special edition flocked one <laughs> that's what he looks and feels like i mean you know if you're into it i guess whatever floats your boat but wow 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 Okay, they're having like a fun date day of like 
him, she goes piggyback riding on his back because she's weak and frail and he like shows her some like warm like some like hot springs and like they're bathing because of course they are and you know she's like you know he's, he's kind of well endowed and like he's soft like a flocked funko so i'm kind of into it but also i gotta save the other gals so like let me taunt him with some sex and maybe he'll go help me rescue them anyway um and so like he clearly has a hard on for her like very obviously he has a hard on for her and he's um this species is endowed in a specific way that Mara already told me about. So, alright, like, I was unsurprised when this was revealed that they are, um, it doesn't matter. They have, like, like a little, so they have horns on their head, like sharp ones. And they have, like, a little tiny horn that's not sharp in a very specific place that is, like, strategically there to be useful for nothing but a specific experience for the mate. Anyway. So yeah, that's all been covered. But so like he ate her out in like chapter two or whatever. And uh, now she's like teaching him kissing, which is a thing that has never occurred to the species before, which like I think I've encountered before. No, wait, okay, so it made sense. Um, Cause I keep thinking about this too. So like, he's like a different species, right? And I, one of my favorite books of all time is Radiance by Grace Draven, which is like a two different species romance. And one of the reasons I love it is because it is dual perspective and they are both equally horrified with each other. It is not like this where he's like, where she's like, ew, you're an alien. He's like, oh, this sexy, like human person is everything that I've ever wanted. Like in Radiance, they're both like, wow, you are not like the ideal of my species. You are ugh. But they respect each other and they find beauty in each other over time. Anyway, I bring it up because like, they they don't really do kissing in his species and they definitely don't really do oral sex um where they don't have the females do oral sex in return um because his species in radiance has like super sharp teeth like fangs like all of them are fangs and like it would just be like impractical so she teaches him kissing and they like find a workaround but like it doesn't occur to the species to do that because it would be like dangerous same thing with oral sex where she, but like human teeth are like it's one of the things he finds unattractive about her in Radiance is like she's got like horse teeth that are all flat and is like ew who would be into that which is hilarious anyway in this obviously he's like into her upon sight which like love that so he's like you know eating her out and they're like she's like teaching him the art of kissing which this species has, has never occurred to them to do that before and like I've mentioned this before I don't know in a World Harper's video I think weirdly enough but like a lot of the time when I'm watching historical romances um and people are like all up in each other's faces and like macking. I'm always like, okay, they had like, they did not clean their mouths or like use breath fresheners of any kind. They're just like, they would have had like gnarly rotting teeth and food breath. And it's just like when they're all up in each other's faces getting all breathy, I'm always like, it would be gross though. It would be gross. So she has been aboard the alien ship for like, they were aboard the ship for like, I think a couple weeks for sure some days and like crash landed and like she was fighting the alien that she was with um and like with like a bucket of their feces and she talks about like braiding her nasty dirty grimy oily hair into a braid so it's like out of her face so she's she's gross which is understandable but he eats her out before she's ever bathed like she's covered in in gunk of like days and days so ew and now they're kissing and like I know she hasn't cleaned her mouth in like days and days and days and like ew <laughs> I'm sorry but ew yuck okay anyway I'm gonna keep reading I'm about 100 pages into this and I have been day drinking so nachos and nacho fries have been ordered because of course they have been just thought you should know I must carry on Thought about turning the camera on when I got to the first aching with need just to be like I'm so tired of the phrase aching with need and I don't even read romance that often but I had to say something because aching with need is the end of this paragraph and the end of this paragraph so three lines separate aching with need and aching with need do you think she's aching with need Nachos have been acquired. Ooh, yeah. Nacho fries and nachos. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. So, you know, they did the nasty in um in a cave 
and he it was great you know it was great for both of them they both had a fantastic time uh, he's definitely sure that she's the one and he really wants her to have his babies and she's like it's a good thing you're an alien and i can't have your babies so you know miscommunication yikes 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 mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um she makes him go back to find her friends and he does and then he goes and hunts to meet her friends and her friends are like Oh, I didn't mention the aliens that kidnapped them uh, originally from Earth gave one of them like a translator device in her ear and apparently it works on everybody because when Vectal, Avatar Man, and Georgie, that's the main character, return, uh, she's able to understand what he says. She can't talk back but she understands what he says. So this is when our main character learns that he's referring to her as his mate and she's like hang on what now? But she's also like weirdly possessive and jealous like when the other girls are like oh he's kind of big and useful she's like he's mine though <laughs> okay anyway so he goes off hunting for like more meat so all the ladies can eat and he thinks to himself like oh this is good because like there's apparently very few women of his kind so like it's mostly some dudes with like a couple females and like they're apparently very long-lived but not a lot of ladies so there's like nobody for them all to mate with. Isn't that so sad? So he's like, there's a bunch of these ladies. I'm like, I found mine. She's mine. Nobody else is. Big fan of her. Happens to be the very first one that he meets is the one that's for him. That's very convenient. But he's like, there's some others. So maybe they'll be the exact perfect right one for like my other single lads. And this will save our species because we'll impregnate them all. Yay. And he's like, yes, and I get to spend my life with her. And uh, he like has this like weird purring thing. And he's very concerned that she doesn't have that. And he's like, we gotta get her the thing that children don't have, which is why he thinks she's a child. Or like, it's like a child, that like kids don't have this thing yet, but adults have this thing that makes them purr and makes their eyes glow and makes them warm. So he's like, we gotta get her the thing because her eyes are not glowing, she is not warm and she is not purring. But otherwise, she is perfect. She can make all my children and this is gonna be great. Um, but I must protect her until then because she is so fragile. And like, that's great. <laughs> but his entire personality is basically like, a puppy dog. He's like, gotta protect my mistress, make sure she's safe, bring her some food, bring her some blankets, and like lick her all bunch. <laughs> He's basically a giant blue puppy dog. And like, again, I can think of worse, but like, whose ideal is that? You know what I mean? I mean, I guess it's a lot of people's ideal since this book is so popular, but like, they can't even talk to each other because there's a language barrier. But the thing is, we get his perspective, so we do know what he's thinking. And I don't think that the language barrier is the main issue because if she could understand what he was saying and thinking, all he's saying and thinking is what she could pretty much intuit from what he's doing. That must protect, must save, you're the one for me, super into you. That's all he's thinking and feeling. So you're not missing much by not understanding his weird language. I mean, luckily, the nasty was as good for him as it was for her because his um enormousness is like great for her, right? As well as the little the little situation with his downstairs is like mm, chef's kiss perfection for her but like her tininess is also like very ideal for him um so great i'm really happy for them i hope they make many many blue children and live happily ever after on not hoth which ruining star wars for me now I know there are more books, and I'm not even done with this one. Why do I know that the other books are about the other gals finding their blue partner? Which, like, they're like cosmically fated mate that they quiver and purr for just happens to crash land on their planet. That is... That is some kind of convenient cosmic forces right there. Okay, so my prediction for the rest of this book, because I'm about halfway, my prediction is that they're gonna have some more sexy times. I mean, obviously, that's like the draw of this book. It's gonna be great. She's going to figure out that I guess they can make babies together, because I'm guessing they can. That's kind of like his whole motivation is to like repopulate species, so like, so romantic. So this is like a conservationist anti-extinction sexy time. But so they're, that's gonna be a thing. And then also they're gonna have to deal with the other evil aliens that kidnapped them. So they're gonna probably like, have to fight them in some epic way that will be very attractive and i bet she'll get pregnant by him 
and be like weirded out by that but also like eventually fine with it and they're just all gonna decide to live happily ever after on the planet of the blue aliens and find their mates and make their babies there will be some kind of i bet since they haven't fought yet there has to be some kind of miscommunication fighting argument tension so she once she figures out that he wants to impregnate her or that he has impregnated her whichever way that's going to upset her and he's not gonna there's gonna be the language barrier so he's not gonna be able to like fix that but then she's gonna eventually come around and be like but would it be the worst thing to carry his blue child because i am into him and she'll like come to terms with it and like they'll be fine that's my prediction so as soon as i finish gorging myself on these nachos i will crack on and let you know if and when i discover that i was correct well, I did it. I finished Ice Planet Barbarians all in one day. And um, my predictions were mostly inaccurate or incorrect. Well, largely because there really wasn't conflict. Um, so I predicted that one, she would find out that she can get impregnated by him. Either that she can or that she has been. And that this will be like a source of, you know, tension between them. That she'll be pissed about it. Um, and the thing is, like, she finds out about it and is, like, a second later, like, like, that instant, she's like, wait, you can impregnate me? Fuck. But, like, literally, like, you know, an hour later, she's like, well, I guess this is my new home because I love him and I'm carrying his baby. So, happy alien homemaker. And then this is the whole thing of, but it has to be the other girl's choice. Oh, okay, yeah. So I didn't explain, uh, this hadn't happened yet they stumble upon or they go into a cave that he knows about and then she notices that there's flashing lights and she's like what is this and like they like get the ice off of it and he doesn't know anything about technology or this what this is he's like yes this is the cave of stars or whatever and she's like no those are not stars and so it's a spaceship that has been there for a long long time but it's still somehow operational like or at least it is powered by something still hence the lights so she like hits a button and turns it on and it like talks to her and it can talk to her in English because it can talk in any language and tells her what species these are and how like they crash landed here like 300 years ago. They're not native here either, but like they were able to survive here because like they formed a symbiotic relationship with like a, this tiny organism. And that's the thing that's purring in his chest. And that's why he keeps saying that she needs one. And that's why he says that she's like a kid because she doesn't have one because like to survive on this planet, they need to have this thing. And so when their children are born, they immediately like give them the like par well not parasite, but symbiotic organism or whatever. So they're like, yeah, because like this, uh, there's like stuff in the air that's like stronger than nitrogen that will like kill you probably within eight days if you don't have the, have the thingy. <laughs> so she's like, shit. <laughs> but then she's like, you know, it's, but I can't make this decision for the other girls and I don't know how I feel about it. And like, there's a ship here, so maybe we have a chance to get home or maybe we can fight those like, evil aliens that captured us like we we it has to be our decision even if this guy says we're mated because then that's when she learns that he says they're mated because like she like downloads matrix style the ability to speak his language from this spaceship as well which is like this is the spaceship of plot convenience that they find it is amazing what it can do and tell them so anyway she also figures out that she's she, that he can impregnate her and she is late on her period so she thinks that it's been like only a few days but she's like i think i'm pregnant and I think this is my new life now. And but she's like, but I gotta tell the other girls about this like parasite that they need to survive slash, you know, it has to be our decision. I can't make them stay just because I found my baby daddy. So she like tells them the situation. They're all like, um, I mean, we're all basically dying already. We can't fight nobody. We can't get home. So looks like we're staying too. Let's get some blue aliens for us too. So they're like fine with it and everyone is like fine with it and <sighs> like um, at first I was annoyed because I guess they're like actually like well it has to be our decision. I'm like we're not talking about like which college you're going to like they were pretty much talking about like look you either take this parasite thing or you die because the odds of getting off this planet are like slim to none. So I don't know why they're acting like it's, it's your decision like it's, this is not that type of situation. And then when they're super fine with it immediately like again not also weird like that you'd accept it as like this is my reality and this is what i need to do to survive here yes the fact that she'd be like well it's my lucky day i get to stay on the planet of the hot blue alien men oh shucks like they're not like 
they, we barely learn anything about her in the beginning before she got abducted. And I guess this is why, because otherwise we'd be like, you, what about your life though? Because she, she pays lip service to that where she's like, I should feel guilty about leaving my life behind, but I just don't. I'm so happy with my, my blue alien hubs. It was just so sexy. And that's what their relationship is for the rest of the book where they just, they just want to jump each other's bones all the time. And now that she speaks his language, as I previously said, she wasn't really missing much in terms of like deep connection or conversation. He just now is able to actually tell her, you know, I love you and I will protect you and I will prevent bodily harm at all times. And it's very like, you are my mate. You are my reason for breathing. You and our unborn child are all that I care about because you are sexy and you are my mate. And I'm just like, I don't understand how this is anyone's fantasy. Because it's not, they don't have any conflict. And it's not that I like conflict, that's why I like Radiance, that they don't have conflict. But they also have like personalities in a relationship beyond sex. In fact, they have a relationship without sex in the first place because they're not really considering having sex at first, they're just friends. Which is why Radiance is a superior book. <laughs> anyway, my other prediction was that like the alien dudes that originally kidnapped them would come back and there would be some kind of, you know, altercation. Even Radiance has that. Radiance is a pretty chill book with very little conflict between the protagonists. And that's why it's also like 200, 250 pages. But there is like a final act, exciting climactic thing that occurs. Uh, so I thought at the very least we'd get that here. And I thought for a second we would. They, they take out their like tracker devices and put them in this like pit of like evil alien monster thingies. Because they think, oh, well then if they come back, they'll just go in there. And I was like, I bet that doesn't work. Ha ha ha. But it does. They are jumping each other's bones again after she's gotten her parasite thing and getting the parasite thing means that the sexy times are even better because of course they're even better. And while they're in the middle of doing the nasty, they see like a spaceship showing up and like it's those guys and they're like, uh oh. And I'm like, yeah, uh oh, here we go. And then they just like turn around and fly away again because they encountered the alien creatures where they left their trackers. And he's like, guess they didn't want to deal with those things. She's like, ha, yeah, high five. <laughs> and that's it. And then they go back to like his tribe and, and some of the other aliens find mates among the other human females. They start a quivering and, and everything is fine. And they're just living happily ever after on the planet of eternal winter with some blue alien men. They're, they're a little bit... <laughs> Like that guy from Guardians of the Galaxy. I've only seen that movie once, but like the one, you know, the one with the like gray skin and the, and he like takes everything literally and it's just kind of this like big thick dude. Like that's basically what these guys are. Like they don't understand anything. Like even when she speaks his language, like they don't understand like innuendo or like anything. And it's not like they really have their own humor either. Um, he just like hunts for their dinner and comes home and sleeps with her and then goes and hunts for their dinner and then sleeps with her and that's their whole life. And I'm just like, I mean, considering you were abducted by evil aliens first and like, if those are the options, evil aliens abducting you and putting you in a cage and treating you like you're a prisoner of war versus nice blue alien man who is ribbed for her pleasure, um, obviously that is the better option. But like, I just, I, I would, I'm, I don't know if she's now bored out of her mind with him. And she even listed her mind the things that she's like, the reasons she loves him. She's like, he's so nice and he's so big and strong and he loves me so much. And I'm like, yep, that is all true. And there is literally nothing else to him. He's like a puppy, a puppy that you fuck. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get the appeal. But I did the thing and the thing is done. I will say for as much as this is like hyped for being like so saucy and randy and like blue alien peen and how like oh my goodness like and I don't even read a lot of romance so like my bar should be pretty low. This actually was like really tame. I'm like okay I never thought that I would be criticizing this but um you know what is also just as boring as he is? Their sex. Because every time they have sex and it's a lot. There's a lot of times that they have sex in this book because there really isn't a plot outside of that. It's pretty much the same. Like pretty much they do the same thing every time. And like, I don't like smutty books and I don't like 
reading books like for the smut or anything but like since this entire book is almost entirely composed of smut I was like can you spice it up a little can you switch it up and you want to do it do it a little different and the one the one time they do it a little different is that time when they think that they see the evil aliens returning because they do it you know doggy style that time which is why they can both be facing the same direction and be like bad aliens and they're leaving okay carry on but other than that it's just like it's just missionary again and again and again and like oh my goodness he's just the shape and size and texture that is perfection but like they don't do anything different so it's just so repetitive because there's nothing else happening and they don't have an interesting relationship because he's just nice and is like worried all of the time either for her physical safety because she's the small and fragile human female or because you know she made sad face and he's like why are you sad <laughs> calm down it's that or they're they're banging and the banging is always the same so it's just like over and over and over again him being like are you okay are you okay okay let's bang banging is same are you okay i love you are you okay okay banging is same nothing else um, hi Mary Kay. What did you think of it? <laughs> Kaz liked it. <laughs> so, I don't think it was that spicy, honestly. There was, like, in terms of, like, volume, <laughs> both actually, like, his volume and, um, just the quantity and page count of how many times it is smutty. It is a lot. But, it's pretty... Kaz, what the what are you doing? It's very repetitive and vanilla and boring. The only thing that's unvanilla about it is that he's a blue alien. But yeah. <laughs> do you want attention? Don't don't rest on the book jacket. No no no. No no no. Stop it. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say about a splendid barbarians. I just, I, I frankly think that it is overhyped because it's not even that spicy. <laughs> but if what I have described to you sounds good, then you should give it a go. Um, yeah. I don't understand how there are a whole bunch more of these books. Because they, I mean, that all that prediction is also correct. It is about all the other ladies getting their Navi husbands. I just, I mean, the only part of this book that had a plot was them getting kidnapped. And then, like, the whole, where am I? What is this? He is a blue alien. Is he going to kill me? No, he seems to be going down on me. I like it. Am I pregnant? But, like, they already know the situation now. They already have the parasite thingy. They already know the alien situation. So like, I don't know what the plot could possibly be for any of the others. Maybe there is a rival green alien clan that will come and cause war. Unlikely though. Anyway, that is that. Um, well, let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings about my thoughts and feelings. Whatever you want, let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times well, but up on Saturdays, so like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.